I routinely get the question, how do I pull off big flakes? How do I support the stone when I'm striking it with either a copper billet or some sort of uh, hard hammer or soft hammer percussion? The key to this is your strike as well as the support you give that stone when you're striking through the stone. It's extremely important to understand the kind of the, the dynamics of a flake, what you're looking to achieve when you pop a flake off in that thinning process. All these big chunky flakes are the ideal flakes that you're looking to remove. But what makes up this flake is pretty important. And this can also be a great indicator of the type of flakes you're pulling off. Is your strike too soft? Are you using too big of a billet? Or is your billet too small? Should I be switching to copper? Should I stick with stone? Should I switch to an antler billet? All of these ideas can really be found in your stone flakes. What you need to understand about flakes is that they are pretty universal when that spall is struck properly with the right percussive device. Every flake is gonna have a dorsal side or a top side and a ventral side, which is the bottom side. To tell the difference between the two, it's pretty easy. You're gonna have some sort of cortex, you're gonna have pre-existing flake scars, you're gonna have indications that this is the top or the top removal side of that flake. Even though you may have held the flake like this, and broke it off on the bottom and the flake rips out the bottom, this is still considered the dorsal side or the top side of the flake. The ventral side is that belly side or that smooth side. This typically has some ripples. It might have a little bit of uh, a gentle wave to it, but it is universally smooth to the touch. We can usually see a bulba percussion. Bulba percussion is that bulbous end where I'm striking that platform, if this is my platform sticking out, I'm striking it and it's creating that conchoidal fracture, that cone that appears, and it's creating a bulb. You can just look at the profile of this flake and see how this is definitely more bulbous compared to this end down here. While we're still on the ventral side, sometimes on flakes, you can see what's called an Allurian scar. This is a small little scar. A lot of scientists don't know how it's produced, but it's a small indication that this flake has been removed by human hands. I believe a shockwave travels down the stone, it hits its end point, and it travels back through and rips the secondary flake off closer to that bulb of percussion. If I flip the flake over even to my dorsal side, I can still see that bulb, that bulbous thickest end, but what I'm gonna have is the end known as the proximal end. This end was closest to me when I struck the spall and removed the flake. Flake end, down here, this is called my distal end. This is at distance from me. This is the tapering out or that feathering out of that flake. I have a proximal end and I have a distal end. All of these flakes have those same characteristics. This is universal in any stone flake that has been removed by human hands. If you don't have these, you might have some geo manipulation and it's very unlikely that it's an artifact if you're looking for artifacts. The flakes are the key to understanding how that spall is working in reference to the hard and soft billets that you might be using, more importantly, the support. Study your flakes, they're the small little puzzle pieces to that large spall. If I'm finding my flakes are breaking off at the end or they're hinging and kind of rolling, I know that the combination that I have as far as the hammer stone or the soft billet that I'm using could be wrong. It could be too high in mass, it could be too low in mass. My strike could be completely too soft or too hard. More importantly, my support might be lacking. I find that a lot of my strikes are hinging. I'm not applying enough force and strike into that stone to cleanly rip off that flake, providing a nice tapered out distal end. If my flakes are breaking off midpoint, that could be too much force. I'm using too large of a billet and it's causing my flakes to break.
supporting the stone is tremendously important. You can support it on your leg, you can support it on the back of your leg, more importantly, you can support it in your hand. A lot of the large thinning that I do, I typically support the stone in my hand. This is my platform right here. Anytime I'm going to do any thinning on a spall, I'm looking to support this platform with my pinky. Whether it's the tip of my pinky, or if the platform re requires me to rest it underneath my pinky in its entirety like this, with a little bit sticking out, I just want to support it. My other fingers, yes, it's supporting the stone, but it's really holding the stone in the right position before I actually strike. If I don't support my stone, I'm more likely to get clean breaks off of the stone. I can get a little bit of a flake scar, but it's very likely the stone's gonna break off. And this little bit of platform support gives me the ability to give a little flex into the stone. More importantly, when I strike, it allows me to catch that flake, it allows me to flip it over, check out what that flake is, really give it a quick study, and move on to the next one. Now when I strike, my hand is still supporting underneath. What happened in a quick millisecond was, as I struck, my finger went down and it came back up, supporting the stone. When I look at this, I can see just by studying this flake, it broke. The reason why this broke into three pieces, I'm dealing with the top layer of cortex. There's just not a lot of stone up here, as you can see, I have a cortex transition between this piece and this piece. This piece had more stone, and as it thinned itself out, working to that distal end, it became more cortex and broke. This is gonna be my platform, sitting below that center line. It's abraded, it's not over isolated, it's not too wide and universal. I have a small protruding point. My pinky goes underneath, supports it, tap touch, Give it a pop, again, broken flake. This is called a transitioning cortex flake. A lot of this material is coming from right here, but a lot of it was cortex. As I get deeper into the stone, I'll have more flakes that are just stone, and you'll get a little bit thicker flake, more importantly, a flake that won't break. For this one, I got my platform right here. I'm gonna be using a hard hammer. For this, I need to understand that I'm not hitting the edge. I'm not looking to rip a flake off with a soft billet or a smaller soft billet. I'm looking to grab a little stone and pop all of this mass off right in here. It's gonna be a little slap. I'm gonna hit it and slap through it. I'm gonna slap through. So you can see right where I struck it, I'm above that edge. I've grabbed stone. When I pop that flake off, I have a nice, clean looking flake. Clearly you can see my bulb of percussion, which is right here. You can see that little Allurian scar right there. I have my dorsal side that has some pre-existing flakes removed. My ventral side, which is very, very smooth and has a few little ripples. I have my proximal end, the end closest to me. And I have my distal end, which tapers out into a really fine, sharp little razor blade. When we look at our flakes, they are essentially the reverse puzzle pieces of that spall. They are great indicators on the billets you're using, how hard you're hitting, more importantly, the support that you're providing to that spall in that thinning process. Typically, we overlook them. We let them fall to the ground. Maybe we'll make another you know, projectile point, outlet dart point, or arrowhead out of it. But these are the indicators on how you're striking that stone, the support you're providing to that stone. More importantly, if it's lacking a lot of those features, right? So we have 
bulbar percussion, ventral, dorsal, proximal, distal, and that Allurian scar. If six of those features aren't there, it doesn't mean that that flake is not, you know, uh, a good flake, but sometimes the stone you're working with, if you're driving those clean flakes off with all those characteristics, the relationship between your billets, your strike, and your support are really on par. You're gonna be able to thin it out, and you're gonna be able to ultimately get to that biface or that end projectile point that you might be looking for. All right, that's all I got. Don't forget about your flakes, study them, recognize the features, use it in your napping moving forward. Appreciate you watching.